So I am uh, standing here uh, on the campus quad at the University of Florida where there was an attempt to set up an encampment last week. Uh, and I know that we've seen this throughout the rest of the country where this has kind of become a common occurrence. Uh, well, uh, we don't do that here in the state of Florida. And so they did have an encampment and it lasted about a few minutes. And so I wanna thank the university here as well as all of our state universities uh, for ensuring that we're gonna maintain order uh, in the state of Florida. You do not have a right to commandeer property. You don't have a right to go take over parts of the university. You don't have a right to go after other students based on their ethnicity. And we're gonna ensure that that's upheld in the state of Florida. Uh, and you've seen that also in other places throughout the state. And look, you know, these are public universities. Uh, these are things that exist uh, basically due to the benevolence of the citizens of Florida, uh, people who have been willing to uh, allow their tax dollars to go to these things. And so if they're not keeping order, then we'll find new people who will keep order. And it's just that simple. And that's what's going to happen when you have here. Now, if you look around the country, uh, you have a lot of elite colleges and universities that have allowed themselves to become overrun with encampments, graffiti, uh, as well as a lot of really uh, nasty uh, anti-Semitism. At Columbia, pro-Hamas activists stormed buildings, took cleaning staff hostage, and destroyed iconic academic halls. At UCLA, Jewish students were barred from entering buildings on campus by pro-Hamas activists. At Portland State, the library was taken over and subsequently trashed by vagrants who weren't even students of the university to begin with. Uh, and we see some of the chants that are done at these universities, such as from the river to the sea. Some are saying, we don't want no two state, we take it all. And you know, part of it is, um, you know, people can kind of say what they want, but when you're talking about from the river to the sea, you're essentially saying you want a second Holocaust that you want to wipe Israel off the map. Uh, and that's what Hamas stands for. That's why Hamas perpetrated the October 7th attack. Uh, so when you see that, uh, you know, that is not uh, what we want to be producing in terms of leaders around this country. And I also look at it and I'm like, you know, how many of them actually have studied the history of this? Very few. They're just doing this because this, they think it's a cheat cause. Uh, the reality is, uh, if you actually studied the history of this, you would be able to see there's never been a Palestinian state. That was Ottoman Empire for hundreds of years, then the British Mandate, then the UN Partition Plan, and basically Israel accepted that and the Arabs rejected, and they went to war and they lost. So we can talk about that, uh, but I think a lot of these people that are just spouting nonsense, uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and it's very concerning, some of these elite institutions around the country, you know, are they just graduating a bunch of imbeciles? Um, I think, unfortunately, that's the case. And that's why a lot of these people are not going to have job offers. You see even a lot of the big financial institutions, which are very liberal, are now saying we're not going to be entertaining this nonsense anymore. You also see uh, really disrespectful behavior. Uh, at UNC, agitators remove the American flag and replaced it with a Palestinian flag. Now, how disrespectful is that to people that have fought and died for this country? At George Washington University, uh, some of these agitators desecrated a statue of the father of our country, George Washington. Talk about disrespect for somebody uh, who is really responsible more than anyone else to ensure that we have an America. Uh, even in, the, in New York City, you have a pro-Hamas people, they go to the World War I memorial and burn the American flag. Uh, just disrespectful conduct. Now, one of the things we've seen around the country is some of the people who are doing this aren't even students of the university. So why would you have people who aren't even students hijack your university for their agenda that makes no sense whatsoever. So we've seen a lot of failures of leadership. Uh, we've seen uh, some of these schools get overrun. Uh, that is not happening 
uh, here in the state of Florida. Uh, you are going to behave appropriately, uh, or if not, you're going to be shown the door. If we have a student that would take a janitor hostage like they did at Columbia University, the only appropriate response is that student is expelled immediately. And when you have that, you are not going to see a lot of the nonsense that you see around the country. We also understand that a lot of this has been, has been directed uh, specifically at Jewish students around the United States. Uh, we've seen Jewish students blocked from being able to enter a library. Uh, we've seen Jewish faculty members blocked from being able to enter uh, classroom buildings. Uh, you should be able to be on a university campus, study, pursue your dreams uh, without being attacked based on your religion or based on your ethnicity. Uh, and so we've seen that time and time again. And that is something that we don't tolerate in the state of Florida either. We also have seen graduations canceled as a result of this stuff that's going on. That's not happening here in the state of Florida. These graduations are really important parts of people's lives. It's a major milestone for students and for their families. Uh, and we're not going to let malcontents ruin that for everybody else. So our graduations have gone on as scheduled without a hitch. Uh, and we directed that we are not going to let them be overrun by the nonsense. Uh, and that will continue to be the case in the state of Florida. And if you try to stop a graduation, you will be held accountable in the state of Florida. So we have made sure that we're very clear on what is going to happen here at our college campuses, and we're going to continue to do it. Now, we also look uh, beyond the state of Florida, and we see what's going on. We see how a lot of this has been directed against Jewish students. I've had friends in Florida uh, whose, whose kids or grandkids or other family members do not even feel safe walking these campuses because of what's going on. Uh, that is unacceptable. And in the state of Florida, what we said is, we have the ability to bring people in uh, for transferring. And so we are making sure to streamline and relax those rules uh, so that folks have a safe haven here in the state of Florida. I think we're the first state that's done that. And I, we may be the only state that's done it, but it's something that's very, very appropriate. And think about it. If you are somebody that's being harassed or being blocked from going to the library uh, just because you're Jewish or for whatever reason in some of these college campuses around the country, uh, you have an opportunity to come here where you know that's not going to be tolerant. I think we have a chance to add some really good students and I want to continue to attract good talent um, and why not? Uh, so just yesterday, Florida ranked number one for higher education by US News and World Report for the eighth year in a row. And overall, the state of Florida for education is ranked number one two years in a row. Uh, three of our universities placed in the top 50 in the latest US News rankings, including UF, UF uh, as our top Florida university, but also FSU and USF. Wall Street Journal did a ranking. All the colleges around the, around the country University of Florida ranked 15th overall, including the private universities, and they were the top ranked public university based on those Wall Street Journal rankings. So we're, we're happy with that, we're proud of that, but we know we're gonna do much better in the future. And the best thing about this is that we have the most affordable higher education in the entire United States. University of Florida right here is ranked the most affordable college in the entire United States of America. Florida State in Tallahassee is ranked number two for most affordable college in the United States. University of South Florida and Tampa is ranked number four uh, in the United States for affordability. And that is really, really key. Uh, some of these colleges that may, may be quality, I mean, they are charging an arm and a leg. People have to mortgage their future you don't have to do that here. And not only that, if you're qualified to come to UF as a Florida resident, chances are you're qualified for bright futures. So you may not have to pay any tuition or maybe you get uh, most of the tuition paid for. So that's a really, really great deal. And that's been very, very good for families. So we're proud of that and we're gonna continue to do it. So we do have this executive order that I signed in January. Uh, we are a welcoming place. 
some of these universities that haven't been able to keep the peace, uh, that are not standing up for their students, uh, those students are going to be able to hotline into our universities. Now, they got to be qualified, but I think a lot of them are qualified and I think would be very value added. We also understand, writ large, the importance of school security, particularly on K through 12 education. So following the attacks on October 7th, we did a special session of the Florida legislature. Uh, we also made sure that Florida Highway Patrol uh, was offering resources to local communities to protect targets uh, of some of the things that we were seeing, particularly Jewish day schools and synagogues. Uh, we also, uh, of course, did the instruction on the transferring, uh, and then we did do more funding to protect some of these institutions that may be targeted. In January, I announced a distribution of $25 million to 134 different Jewish day schools to increase safety and security measures. And that's $43 million just since I took office in 2019. So today I'm here to be able to say that we are also going to support an additional $20 million to continue our support of Jewish day schools in the upcoming 24-25 uh, fiscal year budget. Uh, this is important for school safety. I'm also announcing that I am going to be approving in the upcoming budget almost $570 million in K-12 student safety funding for this year. Uh, since taking office, we've done nearly $1.4 billion invested into student safety initiatives, and that's everything from school hardening, school guardian programs, our Florida Safe Schools Canine Program, threat management portal, as well as mental health awareness and training for faculty and staff. So this has been really significant. Finally, I'm announcing that I'm approving an additional $20 million to increase security uh, and infrastructure at Florida's HBCUs. Now we have under our purview, Florida A&M, but you also have HBCUs that are private and we're helping work with all of them, whether public and private, to in school school security measures. Finally, I recently signed House Bill 1473, which makes uh, improvements to the school safety across the state. We're streamlining the process for former law enforcement officers to become school guardians. This has been very successful. We're also mandating instruction to students on using the Fortify Florida tool, which is our reporting tool for potential threats and we're prohibiting the operation of drones over a school campus. So all in all, those are really important measures. Uh, we believe in safe schools in K-12, and we agree and with, uh, we believe in university campuses that are, uh, that are orderly and that people have an opportunity to learn uh, and that you don't have the campus overrun with agitation. Uh, finally, before I turn it over uh, to our next speakers, I can also say in the upcoming budget, uh, with respect to University of Florida, uh, I am approving $75 million for a new campus in Jacksonville, which is going to be really significant. I'm also approving $80 million for the construction of the Semiconductor Institute here at UF. Uh, and then that's in addition to another $200 plus million that we are supporting for other programs and research items at this university. And of course, we have other things in the budget that you'll be seeing as well. So all in all, I think that this has been significant. We've put a lot of resources into supporting our state universities. And I think UF has probably gotten more than just about anyone. Of course, I think we've had appropriations chairman in the Senate who are UF graduates. So that helps when you have that. Uh, but we've definitely put our money where our mouth is and we've done a lot. All right, so we're going to hear uh, from some other folks, uh, starting with our Chancellor of the State University System, Ray Rodriguez. Thank you, Governor, for your support of higher education. Florida is a law and order state. Without order, there is chaos. Across this nation, we are witnessing that chaos on college campuses. Students and outside agitators have established encampments on campus. They've occupied academic buildings. They've occupied administrative buildings. They've occupied libraries. That is wrong. In Florida, we have had protests on our campuses. First Amendment rights have been respected. 
but our state statutes and university policies have been enforced. Everywhere protesters attempted to establish an encampment, which is a violation of university policy, it was prevented and the rules were followed. If you look nationally, the primary agents for this anarchy is the National Students for Justice in Palestine. On 425, they said, we will continue to escalate until our demands are met. And then on April 29th, they threatened, no divestiture, no commencement. These threats had their desired effects in other states. The University of Minnesota negotiated with the protesters and promised to consider divestment. Northwestern University negotiated and agreed to create an advisory committee on investment responsibility and include students. They also agreed to create two new visiting lines and fill them with Palestinian faculty and fund five new scholarships for Palestinian students. At Wesleyan University in Connecticut, faculty were allowed to go into the student encampments and teach classes. Think how you would feel if you were a parent of a Jewish student at Wesleyan and the class was being conducted in the encampments. Rutgers University negotiated with protesters and agreed to create a Department of Middle Eastern Studies, build an Arab Cultural Center, add a senior DEI administrator to promote Arab, Muslim, and Palestinian communities and provide amnesty to all students and faculty who participated in the protest and broke university policy or state law. It is shameful to witness these universities negotiating with lawbreakers, appeasing their demands, offering amnesty to the guilty, and divesting their funds. I shared earlier how na national Students for Justice in Palestine threatened commencement. I'm going to tell you one of the reasons we found that so offensive. The university class of 2024 is largely comprised of the high school class of 2020. These are students that due to COVID did not have the opportunity to walk across the stage and receive their diploma at a graduation ceremony. And now these national activists want to deny this same cohort of students the opportunity to walk across the stage and receive the degree that they have earned through their hard work, an annual rite of passage and one of the most important traditions in academia. Upon consulting with Governor DeSantis, I was directed to work with our university presidents and ensure that no commencement ceremony was canceled or disrupted and we were provided all of the resources that we needed to achieve that objective. I am so proud of our university presidents. I'm so proud of our university campus police. I'm so proud of the Florida Highway Patrol and the manpower and expertise and support they provided us in our commencement ceremonies. Our county sheriffs stepped up, our local police departments stepped up, and all of them working together ensured that our commencements occurred without disruption, without discrimination, without intimidation, and without harassment. Now many of these protesters have said they'll be back in fall and they plan to pick up right where they're leaving off. Well, when they return, rest assured, we will be here, ready to continue to provide the highest quality education at the lowest price while maintaining law and order on our campuses. In Florida, there will be no negotiations. There will be no appeasement. There will be no amnesty. And there will be no divestment. Under Governor DeSantis, Florida will continue to lead by example. Thank you, Governor, for all you're doing. You know, I wasn't here after October 7th on the campus. I I'm, sure those pro I'm sure the protesters were all very upset uh, at the fact that Hamas went into Israeli communities and baked babies in ovens, uh, raped women, assassinated elderly people in very brutal ways. I'm sure they were very upset about that uh, and routed. Oh, no, they weren't. That's right. They didn't care about that. They were completely fine uh, with those massacres happening. 
and they had no, no concern um, about that. And I think that that says anything. I also hear this stuff about occupation. Um, the Gaza Strip is not occupied, okay? That's been Hamas's sanctuary for many years now. And uh, did they create opportunities for people? Did they utilize the natural resources? No, they focused their efforts on terrorism. And that's what's happened. And so, uh, so much of this is just such a farce uh, that uh, it's just kind of embarrassing to even hear some of this nonsense. So, okay, with that, I have Dave Kerner, uh, Florida Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. Thank you, Governor, and it's a great day to be a Florida Gator, as it always is. Chancellor, I love your tie. Awesome, outstanding. Um, to echo what, what the Governor has said, as we have seen very clearly, there is a stark difference between Florida and many other states in this nation. This is very intentional. Our Governor will not bend to the shrill and illogical will of an entitled and reckless super minority. He will not tolerate for a moment our campuses degenerating into collectives of violence and anti-American and anti-Semitic dogma. And neither will the Florida Highway Patrol. So I answer a question that I've been asked pretty often, which is, has the governor personally been involved in directing law enforcement and the Florida Highway Patrol uh, to these events and to these university campuses? I answer that question in the affirmative. The answer is yes. On countless occasions, campus and local law enforcement has requested the assistance of Florida Highway Patrol, and on countless other occasions, we have proactively assisted campus and local law enforcement. But in all instances, these actions were taken at the direction of Governor DeSantis. As I stand upon the campus of the flagship university of the flagship state of America, I am reminded that the right to walk to your class free from religious harassment and the ability to obtain an education free from radicalized intimidation are all parts of our larger God-given rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To close, as I look out upon this beautiful campus, my alma mater, I'm reminded that Florida's colleges and universities will always remain centers of education and growth, not encampments of radicalization and intimidation. The governor has been transparent and forceful in the state's strategy. Florida's students and faculty will never have to seek shelter in the shadows of these campuses because those that violate the law will find themselves in the county jail first. It is an honor to be here today, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, Governor, thank you for your leadership, and go Gators. Okay. All right, uh, next we'll hear from our, our host, the President of the University of Florida, Ben Sass. Good morning, Governor, welcome. Uh, Chair Husseini, Vice Chair Patel, uh, Chancellor Rodriguez, leaders of our legislature, members of the press, we're glad to have you on campus today. Uh, I will be brief. I have four simple messages. First, to the Floridians who pay our bills, the University of Florida will always uphold speech and assembly rights, and we will also always follow the law. Too much of higher education has been captured by a lot of nonsense over the course of the last weeks, and that won't happen at the University of Florida. To the law enforcement officers who have kept things peaceful, thank you. Your professionalism has been amazing. Uh, over the course of the last two weeks in particular, you have been long-suffering, giving protesters the right to exercise their free speech rights, but also the opportunity to come into compliance with our time, place, and manner restrictions. Our goal has not been to arrest. It has been to help people get into compliance with the law. And what you have done in the face of being spit on, uh, being shouted at with uh, profanities has been amazing. Uh, the professionalism of our law enforcement is a model for lots and lots of people across the country. To the protesters, you have heard us say this again and again. You have a constitutional right to protest, and we will protect that. 
but anyone who crosses the line with prohibited actions will face the consequences. This is a big university where not everyone is going to agree. We have 86,000 souls on this campus, and we will treat each other with respect. Unlike many institutions across the country, I'm incredibly proud that over the course of our 21 commencements over the last six plus days, we were able to celebrate our students and celebrate their families, which is the purpose of the commencement time. Too often in our time and place, we give the most voice to the loudest and angriest people. The University of Florida is not filled with angry people. And it's been wonderful to see a lot of moms have tears streaming down their cheeks as we were able to hold commencements over the course of the last week. And that's because of the, the fortitude and professionalism in particular of our law enforcement. And finally, to our Jewish students. UF is proud to be home to the most Jewish students anywhere in the country. This is the most Jewish university in the country, and it is great to be a Jewish Gator. I want all of our students to feel safe, but more than the subjective feeling, I want our students to be safe. And that is true today, and we're glad to have you, and we're excited to celebrate a big future together. Go Gators. Well, thank you for that. And, um, you know, we talked about some of the academic superlatives, but I was driving in and we did drive past uh, the swamp. You know, Nick Saban has retired from Alabama. So this is the window uh, to have the, the gate. I know Georgia is still very tough. It's a tough league. I get it. Uh, but uh, I saw those national championships up back in the day, and that was uh, – that was a great run and basketball too. I mean, so 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 hopefully we'll get back there. We're really looking forward uh, to seeing um, uh, Florida return to being the, the college football capital uh, of the world like we used to be. Okay, uh, we finally have uh, uh, Jager Leach. He's an incoming senior at UF and past president of the Jewish Student Union. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty and honored guests, I stand before you today as a Jewish student, eager to share my experiences and express my gratitude for the supportive environment that has been created here at the University of Florida. In a world where news of encampments and protests on college campuses inundates us daily, I am acutely aware of the privilege of studying at an institution where our leadership is unwavering in its support of our community. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jagger Leach, and I am a rising senior majoring in sports management on the pre-law track. I am the past president of both the Jewish Student Union and Zeta Beta Tau, a historically Jewish fraternity. As you can tell, being a Jewish leader is something that I value and something that has shaped me into the student that I am today. When protests started at UF, I was struck by a profound sense of pain. While walking to the library to study for an exam, nothing could have prepared me for the deafening chants of the protesters, shouting, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, and long live the Antifada. Phrases that call explicitly for the elimination of the Jewish people, my people. Despite my efforts to focus on my studies, after a few, uh, to focus on my studies, the noise persisted, making concentration impossible. After a few minutes, I was about to leave. However, the noise suddenly stopped. After leaving the library, I noticed that the protesters were still there spewing their hateful rhetoric. Yet I was relieved to learn that university administration and UFPD had taken swift action to ensure that their noise would not disrupt the academic environment. Across, across the country, Jewish students are faced with this reality every day. However, thankfully, at the University of Florida, this was only a short-lived incident. I want to take a moment to commend President Sass, the Office of Student Life, the UFPD, and the Governor DeSantis for this unwavering support and commitment to our safety and education. President Sass has been a vocal supporter of Jewish students, both in mainstream media and through his actions, such as attending our Passover Seder and speaking at a solidarity vigil. The, pa the protest guidelines published by the Office of Student Life exemplify a balanced approach that respects free speech while ensuring a safe and respectful environment for all students. Governor DeSantis and the state of Florida deserve recognition for their steadfast support. Despite the challenges posed by protests, they've remained committed to protecting all students, regardless of their background. Their actions, such as providing security for Jewish institutions, 
and waiving transfer application requirements for Jewish students facing perse anti-Semitic persecution demonstrate a strong commitment to our safety and well-being. In conclusion, I want to emphasize the importance of upholding the principles of free speech while condemning the promotion of terror. Our leaders have navigated this challenge admirably, ensuring our campus remains a place where diverse perspectives can coexist peacefully. While it may be much easier to listen to the loud voices and conform to their demands, it is far more challenging to do what is right. Governor DeSantis and President Sapps have exemplified this principle. They have chosen the path of righteousness, ensuring our safety and fostering an environment where all students can thrive. Thank you. Well, well said. Thank you so much. And, um, we are um, excited about what lies ahead for our state universities, UF leading the way. Uh, I want to thank, I know we have the, the chairman here, Maury Husseini, and uh, Vice Chairman Raul Patel. We have a lot of great board members on the trustees, and a lot of people that have worked really hard uh, over the years uh, to make sure that this is a uh, premier academic institution. And uh, as a Florida resident, you know, to be able to, you know, it's very difficult to get in here. It used to be a little bit easier back in the day. Very difficult, but uh, you have an opportunity to get a great education at a very, very affordable cost. So we're going to, we want to continue that. Uh, there'll be a lot that we're going to be doing to continue to support the efforts. This year it's the Semiconductor Institute. I know the Jacksonville campus is going to be really exciting, uh, but I think that there's great days ahead uh, for this university and through, uh, throughout the, the rest of the state of Florida. But we're going to do it right. Uh, we're going to be focusing on academic rigor. We're going to be focusing on the pursuit of truth. Uh, we will not let the inmates run the asylum in the Sunshine State. Thank you, everybody.